Unable to turn the tide on guns, anti-violence activists turn their attention in a new direction, bullets. Buyouts urged to GM. Ford keeps losing ground in China. FCA tries to move on without Sergio. The road for the big three seems pothole. And Detroit development from downtown to the neighborhoods. Today is Sunday, November 25th, 2018, and this is Flashpoint. Hi, welcome to Flashpoint. Hope you've been enjoying this holiday weekend and that you have found many things for which to be thankful. Last week, I mentioned that it was high time we looked into the matters that may have escaped our attention while the midterm elections had us so transfixed, and we're going to continue in that vein today. For starters, gun violence continues to tear away at American cities, Detroit near the top of the list. The gun debate hasn't inspired much change, so what about looking at not the gun, but perhaps the ammo? Wayne County Commissioner Reggie Davis has been been pushing an approach that focuses more on bullets. And this week, the Detroit City Council signed on. County Commission is going to take it up later this week, but does it actually mean anything? Reggie Davis is here to talk about it this morning. We also need to spend some time on Detroit's signature business. For all the success the American economy has enjoyed, you'll excuse the auto companies if they still feel like cats in a room full of rocking chairs. All of them are a little panicked about the new version of NAFTA. Just days before that deal is supposed to be finalized, it still includes tariffs on steel, which the automakers fear could price their vehicles right out of affordability here or abroad. To borrow a line from the music man, you got trouble, my friends. We're going to talk about that, too. And while we've talked a lot about the plight of Detroit schools and the divide between downtown and the neighborhoods, well, now the investor rating service Moody's is talking about that, too. It has been an obsession of city leaders, but is that obsession bearing any fruit? We'll cover that, too, all this morning on Flashpoint. Chris Rock has a bit in his stand-up routine about how we don't need gun control, we need bullet control. If bullets cost $5,000, we'd have no more innocent bystanders, he reasons. Well, joining me this morning is Reggie Reg Davis, former radio personality who was driven to public service uh, after his brother Vito was gunned down and killed. Now he's a Wayne County Commissioner in the 6th District and created a resolution limiting the purchase of ammunition, which is referred to as the bullet bill. Reggie, good to see you this morning. Good Thanks to see coming. you too, Devin. Thanks for the invitation. Absolutely. I, I, I want to make clear first, because this was people talking about taxing ammunition and all that, there's a long way to go. This is really just an introductory step yes. that you're, you've got the council on board, but you're now, you, you got to move this to Lansing. You're trying to Absolutely. spread this all over the place. Long ways to go. Very special thanks to uh, Detroit City Council, uh, Reverend Andre Spivey, yeah. who, uh, man, just very stand-up type of guy, uh, who took the lead on this and he sponsored it for us at council. Um, and yeah, like you said, we got a long ways to go. Because they don't have the power uh, to levy Yeah, we don't. We don't. It, I mean, if, if you look at uh, the, the, the state of Michigan, we're all creatures of the state. All the uh, the cities, townships, uh, counties, the 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 state of, uh, of Michigan and Lansing, they have the authority to to legislate gun laws, bullet laws. So I can't do it as a Wayne County Commissioner, but I have this idea that needs to be done. So how about we rally the troops, let's build a coalition of local officials, and let's go up to Lansing together so that when we're lobbying, they're really listening to us with the type of ear that I, I feel they really need to, you know what I mean? I saw Breitbart picked up on the story this past uh, yeah. week, and I know that, well, Second, Second Amendment supporters are going to see this as this is just sort of uh, an end around. Uh, the, you're talking about ammunition, but you're really going after people's guns. I don't. How, how would you? Not at all. Our Second Amendment right to bear arms is the greatest thing that we could have. I want to protect myself and my family, and so should you. My issue doesn't concern those that are responsible gun owners. Mr. and Mrs. NRA, we talk about taking the, the bullets, ammunition, and putting a tax on it. Uh, and, and, and then from the you know, proceeds of that, we will do a few things. We will help families in urban cities who can't afford to bury loved ones. And at the same time, we will teach them about uh, a gun. What is a gun? Why and how should you use this? How should you or why should you become a responsible gun owner? So it's, it's, a, it's a lot that's entailed in this bullet bill. There's resolution. also, a, and a big component of this, and you talk about mental health a lot, is trying to assess the mental health of somebody who's trying to buy Absolutely. ammunition. If you bought a gun 10 years ago and then you're trying, perhaps things have changed in your life, but the system has probably lost track of where you are with mental health, I guess, mm -hmm. is what some would argue. But I think other people would say that, look, the people who are uh, causing most of the mayhem 
aren't buying their guns or their ammunition in any of the places that we can monitor. Yeah, and you know, you can't, can't help but a certain something, if, if you know what I mean, Devin. I, my concentration, again, is on, I hate to say it this way, but you'll understand, better understand me, folk who look like myself and who are in, inside of uh, a cities like Detroit, and they, they never get a chance to go outside, cross eight miles to another city, uh, much less another state, another country, and, and it's limited. So, you know, mental illness is, is large. Our, the young men who we say go to school e each day, they wanna go, they wanna go to college, but when their stomach is growling and before they get to the bus stop, much less to school, they see rundown, uh, you know, blighted structures, they see dead bodies, dead dogs, drugs, et cetera. That plays in the mind. And when, when, a, when a young person is developing uh, through their adolescence, the triggers like that will, they, they become susceptible to, to things like uh, diabetes, heart disease, and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we got to consider that this mental health thing runs deeper than what we, we, we really know. Uh, no doubt. I, I, some would say, though, that you're uh, aiming uh, at, at the population that you just talked about mm -hmm. with something that affects everyone, though, yeah, and not just true. that population. Yeah. yeah, well, look at the news just a short time ago. California at a country uh, club, uh, playing country music, having a good time. Some yeah. guy walks in and, and shoots up the place. It, hap it seems like it's happening, what, every 60 days now in the country? So it, it goes always goes nine times out of ten, goes back to mental health. It, it so often does, but the gun problem itself, and you've heard this time and time again, if we outlaw guns, only outlaws will have them. Well, if we outlaw bullets, I, I, I guess then the same kind of market then develops around ammo. How many different uh, components can you build into this to create really the kind of fail-safe sort of posture that I think that you see uh, this being able, having the potential to be? Yeah, well, I think the best part of this, um, listening to what you just said, is the serial numbers. Uh, if we were able to put those on the, the on ammunition, ammunition um, or some type of tracking device, some people may say it's too, it's not affordable for us to put serial numbers. So, how about uh, some sort of tracking device? I'm, I'm thinking fingerprint. You purchase a box of bullets, you put your fingerprint there. Here's the deal: the uh, senior lady just a short time ago, some guy shoots her house up over and over and over again. Right? Yeah. We can't find out who he is. If we could get the bullet, there are many bullets in our walls. Take that bullet and trace it back to who purchased who bought that ammunition, may not go directly to him, but we're closer to find out who that guy is, right or wrong. Yeah. So that, that's the idea. And lastly, as you look back at what happened in your own family, uh, do you see what you're working on right now and doing right now as having been able to address that? Or would, uh, was that something still beyond your control? Devin, I actually lost, I don't get a chance to talk about this, two brothers. Uh, yes, yes. Vito, Keon, yes. I lost my uncle and my first cousin, yeah. all as a result of senseless gun violence. Yeah. Everywhere I go around the city, especially since uh, you know this piece, the bullet bill, I hear over and over again from all, all walks of, of life in, this, in the city, we, we love what you're doing. What is it that we can do to support that? Thanks for helping to save our babies' lives. So it is moving. It's going somewhere. We've got a long ways to go, but this is a great start. And once again, thanks to Detroit City Council uh, for teaming up with uh, the bullet bill. We really appreciate it. I know we'll be talking to you as thanks you uh, travel me. down this road with Thank it. Thank you, Devin. We really appreciate you. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Uh, we come back, we'll uh, talk autos, uh, the new NAFTA. What's that going to mean? This is Flashpoint on Local 4.